high inflation is absolutely killing many, many people. They can't buy gasoline. They have a hard time buying groceries. Everything they buy and consume for their daily lives is a hardship to them. And can't we wait to make sure that we do nothing to add to that? And Senator Bernie Sanders says Joe Manchin is betraying his president and his party. He didn't abruptly do anything. He was he negotiating has sabotaged for a while. the president's agenda. And the problem was that we continue to talk to Manchin like he was serious. He was not. And up next for us, the Democrats are venting their fury at Senator Joe Manchin and as he deals another blow to the Biden administration's big policy ambitions. So Senator Bernie Sanders is publicly slamming Joe Biden after the West Virginia Democrat torpedoed President Biden's uh, Joe Manchin after, after he torpedoed President Biden's climate and tax agenda. Take a listen. Yeah, people like Manchin, cinema, cinema to a lesser degree, who are intentionally sabotaging the president's agenda, what the American people want, what a majority of us in the Democratic caucus want. Nothing new about this. And the problem was that we continue to talk to Manchin like he was serious. He was not. But over at the White House, the rhetoric is noticeably less fiery. Look, I'm not going to get into the the, uh, tru- the twos and fro's and the back and forth. What I'll say is this, is that uh, the president for some time has been laying out what we need to do on clean energy. That if Congress uh, and the Senate is not going to act on that front, then he is going to take the powers that he has uh, with executive authority and take steps on that front. Our panel is back to discuss this. So, Ivanu, obviously, people are furious. And, yeah. <laughs> although I, some people would be like, well, Bernie Sanders is not a Democrat, but he's speaking for the progressive wing of the party right now. Yeah, and look, he may not like it, but Bernie Sanders has to deal with the reality that they are in a 50-50 Senate, and they're trying to pass Joe Biden's agenda through a budget process that requires them to do it along straight party lines, or they can do it along straight party lines, which is what they are trying to do. So that means they need Manchin's support, and that's why they've been frustrated for over the past year of trying to get a deal. Remember where they started? I mean, they started talking about a $3.5 trillion massive expansion of the social safety net. Manchin was open to it. He was talking about it. He suggested something much less than that, $1.5 trillion. They went back and forth all year about that. And now they're not even getting anywhere close to that. But there is could be some significant policy changes. He is open to allowing Medicare to negotiate the price of prescription drugs. He's also willing to extend uh, expiring subsidies under the Affordable Care Act. So there could be some policy provo- prov- provisions that get into law, but that's still not going to be enough for what the left wants. And for those who are paying attention, that is of the things that they started with, they're down to two of the items. And the White House is, as you heard there from Brian Deese, really not taking this as an opportunity to slam uh, Mansion because they think that they need to get to a deal with him. Politico writes this, unlike Sanders, Schumer and, Sh- Schumer and the White House are not attacking Mansion. They want to move past. Uh, they want to. They want to move past him and emphasize the victory achieved rather than what was lost. A reconciliation bill that lowers prescription drug prices and extends subsidies to millions of Americans who rely on the ACA will be one of the largest health care bills passed in a long time. In other words, take the win. Yeah, and expect to hear more of that from the White House and President Biden's allies in the coming days and weeks, where essentially the message is: Look, we're focused on what we can get. We are focused on not what's already happened, but uh, what actually is pretty, uh, is still uh, salvageable. But the reality is that, as Manu just said, uh, there is real frustration. There is real frustration at Joe Manchin, although the White House has long sort of stopped reading out any uh, activities, communications between the White House and Senator Manchin. Uh, I think that there is growing frustration that you hear from the base, from Democrats who feel like, well, we know we have a Democratic president in the White House. We know that Democrats control Congress. So why isn't more getting done? Of course, the political reality is what you just pointed out. It is a a 50-50, evenly divided Senate. They can't get anything done unless Joe Manchin gets behind and every member of the party gets behind. We are quickly approaching the midterms as well. And these frontline Democrats are sounding the alarm. Uh, Mark Kelly in Arizona says the Biden administration needs to, quote, be looking for more opportunities. Raphael Warnock in Georgia, uh, we can do something and we ought to. Elisa Slotkin uh, in Michigan, who has been very vocal, saying what I need is a plan. I am not looking for messaging help. And the reason is because inflation is, is very bad. And Joe Biden's approval rating is 
bad and getting worse, it seems. So the, the stakes are very high for something to get done. Yeah, absolutely. President Biden, I mean, he spent uh, what, four decades almost in Washington before, so he wants to have something deliverable for his members to go back home with. But MJ makes a great point, just this level of frustration from the base, right? The base for the previous four years and the previous administration saw all of the deliverables that went toward the former President Trump's base, right? They wanted the same thing out of President Biden, to keep his party in line and on track and unified as well. And then when Manchin goes astray, that kind of adds to the frustration with both him, but also uh, President Biden's ability to unite his party. And what, what is the Democrats' message running into the midterms? I mean, they really don't have one. That's, they're now running, they recognize full well that inflation also will be the dominant issue headed into the midterms. And how do you deal with that? They all have a whole bunch of ideas, none of them which will probably become law, like a gas tax holiday, or would have much of an impact on right. gas prices or anything else. But that is their real fear here. The, the economy, of course, is going to be a big factor here, and people are feeling it and will potentially take it out against the party in power. And meanwhile, a major infrastructure bill that did get done seems to be in the rear view mirror.